Hi folks, Kevin here. Well today the topic is permaculture ethics. The three traditional ethics are earth care, people care, and fair share or return of surplus, which all first appeared in the book Permaculture One, produced in 1978 by Bill Molson and David Holgram. I'm going to give it a twist. Here we go. It always starts off with earth care. After all, we need to take care of our home, and our home is this beautiful blue planet. We need to protect natural systems. We need to work with nature as opposed to working against nature. We need to have minimal negative impact on the natural systems and environments that make up this beautiful planet. We, re we need to rebuild damaged systems wherever and whenever we have the means. I really like the Gaia hypothesis. It, it states that all organisms and their non-living surroundings are bound together in a dynamic system that maintains the conditions necessary for life itself. Earth care is about water that is clean, free, and abundant. Soil that is abundant and teeming with microorganisms, the microorganisms that are necessary for helping plants to grow that feed us and feed all the other creatures on the planet. Forced ecosystems with biodiversity, landscapes, and indigenous wildlife are also ne necessary for healthy earth systems. Air that is clean, breathable, with no harmful levels of pollutants is also essential for earth care. Now we get to people care. People care begins with ourselves, radiates out to our families, our neighbors, our local communities, and extended communities, and ultimately internationally. We have to take care of each other. We need to meet our basic needs for food, shelter, education, employment, and healthy social environments. Healthy people create healthy environments. Healthy people can reduce, reuse, repair, repurpose, and recycle. Healthy people develop social and community networks that support people and support the earth, earth care goal. Fair share. This is the one that's, that has had some challenges uh, uh, with its terminology and what it means and so there's been some descriptive terms that I'll also uh, describe in here. So the other term that's commonly used is return of surplus and it's about really limiting our consumption. We only have one planet. It's about putting surplus back into the earth care and people care systems. Bill Mollison said we need to set limits to population and consumption. David Holgram said set limits and red redistribute surplus. Starhawk talked about future care and the, the future is dependent on both the existence of the earth and people. So I'm not sure how to look at it, I just consider share. The transition ethics is a fourth eth ethic that I'm adding to this slide presentation. Uh, it takes into account how we respond to our awakening. What do I mean by our awakening? It's when we wake up from our somber, our consumer lifestyles where we're uh, watching television and going about our lives and thinking that there's a never-ending supply to all of our natural resources. To think that consumerism is the best thing in the world and not realizing how much waste we're, we're, we're producing and, and how rapidly we're destroying our, our, our uh, carbon supplies that were produced by uh, solar energy for over millions of years and we're depleting them over a couple hundred years. It's about that awakening that we all go through when we want to turn to permaculture as a set of tools to help us repair some of these damaged systems and repair our, our social and cultural systems. So uh, Scott Gallant uh, wrote an article, and I'll put a link below, uh, titled Transition Ethics, The Art of Compromise. Why compromise? Well, it takes time to make that transition. Those of us who have already been out there and practicing permaculture and all, we're so comfortable with knowing uh, what needs to be done and we're, we're taken back by what we consider people's ignorance and, real, and, and their awakening and saying, oh my God, I didn't realize that this is bad for the earth, this is bad for future generations. 
Well, we need to meet people where they're at and not make them feel guilty about what they're, that they haven't done the right thing all along. Uh, it's taking time out and le letting folks grasp the situation as necessary. If we aren't careful and we push people and we overwhelm them, they can go into a state of cognitive dissonance. So the approach, the, the, the most positive approach is to be supportive, be proactive, and not fuel the, the, the fears and anger uh, that are natural to experience when you're first awakening. So now on to the, the final ethic, yes, self-care. Uh, I know that this is, uh, is assumed as the core of people care. After all, it's, it, I stated it starts with ourselves and radiates out to our families. Well, my twist on this is through my life experiences. And so my talks are always going to reflect my experiences. My experiences that I'm uh, sharing with you today are two. One, I'm a retired veterinarian. My wife is still a practicing veterinarian. Uh, we're surrounded by doctors who are kind and compassionate. We're, we're surrounded by nurses and, and assistants, people who are kind and compassionate. My wife and I, years ago, also uh, started a, a wildlife rehabilitation center, a not-for-profit corporation. And as you probably are aware, there were no resources coming in. We both worked full-time and poured all our, our money into our passion, taking care of the wildlife that were orphaned and injured. And many veterinarians and veterinary technicians and nurses and assistants, because of the, the compassion and love that they have for the business that they're in or, or the charity that they're involved in, there's a relatively high burnout rate. There's a high divorce rate. There's, uh, there are concerns about overextending what our needs are. And so that's why I'm saying when it comes to permaculture, we need to realize that sometimes we're not going to get the support of family and friends. We're not going to get the, the support of the community people that, that we're around. So it's taking care of ourselves. It's about helping to reduce the chances of our own personal burnout. After all, you need to own your own health. Uh, owning it is, is what it's all about. It's about eating healthy, moving more, stressing less, loving more, and achieving optimum, optimal health, including physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. So that's all I've got to say about the permaculture ethics, and, and you see what my twist is. Uh, please share this video with your friends. I'll put a link back to it to our website. I'll put links to uh, Starhawk and Scott's uh, uh, article as well on the transition ethics. So uh, please share this with your friend. Give me a thumbs up if you think it was good. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think. If there's more, if you'd like me to go into more detail on some of these topics, it's still the winter time, so I'm trying to get some of these out and up on the website. So thanks so much for taking the time to listen through the, the video. I appreciate it. Have a great day.